Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, December 16th. Our special guests are Carly Mora and Sean Fahey. Their topic is Flipping Out with Flipgrid. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. I'm going to turn the mic over to Maureen, who will now introduce our special guests and ask them the newbie question. Great, thanks. Well, first of all, welcome Carly and Sean. These are two of the most passionate, inspired educators around. They integrate technology throughout their classrooms, and they're particularly enthusiastic about Flipgrid as Flipgrid ambassadors. I've only met them virtually. It was Carly who helped set me on a journey, first with HyperDocs back in the spring of 2016, with both her work and an introduction to Sean's fabulous HyperDocs. Now this dynamic duo has done the same thing with Flipgrid. They're both such inspirational teachers. Carly is an instructional coach and educational support teacher at Sun Terrace Elementary School in the Mount Diablo Unified School District in Concord, California. She supports all staff with imp implementation of the Common Core Standards as well as with integrating technology in a two-to-one Chromebook iPad environment. Carly also supports all classes as they rotate through the Sun Terrace STEM lab, working on coding, robotics, design challenges, green screen projects, makerspace activities, and more. Sean is currently in his sixth year as a classroom teacher. He began teaching in fourth grade and is now a sixth grade math teacher at, I think it's Troop Elementary School in his hometown of Paoli, Indiana. Sean strives to replace traditional classroom lessons with innovative delivery and unique learning experiences to his students. He believes that the role of a teacher is changing and that student learning experiences can be greatly enhanced with the use of technology in the classroom. I love watching their work online. I've been so fortunate to attend several of their webinars and start using Flipgrid myself. So. Now we are on to having Carly and Sean answer the newbie question for us. So Carly and Sean, you can choose who's answering or both. Why is it encouraging why is encouraging student voice so important and how does the use of video support this? On to you, Carly and Sean. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is Sean. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, my answer to that is actually I'm going to kind of steal an answer um, that I just heard uh, yesterday um, during a video of that Ditch Summit by Matt Miller. And they were talking about student voice. And they, they said, in your classroom with the technology that we have today, if you are not hearing from every student in your classroom, to know where they're at at any given time in a lesson, uh, you're doing things wrong. Because we now have technology, uh, inclu uh, which includes Flipgrid, uh, to hear every student's voice so we can know what changes might need to be made uh, in our lessons or in their learning to help guide them uh, down the road. So I kind of like that uh, for my answer. So I'll let Carly answer that. Hi, this is Carly. I uh, totally apologize for my voice. Uh, uh, finally got sick this uh, school year, so uh, hopefully the scratchiness isn't too annoying. I am also going to steal my answer from um, from Charlie, uh, who's the, one of the founders of Flipgrid, and he says that Flipgrid brings the back row to the front, and that is totally true. When we use video feedback, we get we get student responses that we wouldn't have gotten before, and we can really hear from all of our students. And then they start connecting with each other in a way that we really never thought possible. Exactly. It kind of brings those shy kids out in the front uh, to the front where they can um, provide, give them an avenue to um, 
share their share their voice, share their answers, because sometimes you know a classroom can be dominated by a handful of students, and we should give every student an opportunity to share um, their what they know. Uh, and so Flipgrid is a great opportunity for that. Um, yeah, so I'll agree with that. Okay, thank you. And now on to your presentation. All right, so if you haven't already heard, introducing ourselves, uh, I am Sean Fahey. You can follow me at Twitter at Sean J. Fahey. Um, and that is me on the right of your screen <laughs> in the hat. Uh, definitely not the good looking one. Oh, yes, you are. Uh, I'm Carly Mora. I'm at Carly Mora on Twitter. And um, that is actually a picture of Sean and I when we went to visit Flipgrid headquarters last year. And although Sean and I have worked together a ton virtually, uh, we, co we create um, a lot of hyperdocs together and we work together a ton on ditch book things. Um, we actually had never met before that and so that was actually the first and only time that we've met in person and it was super fun. We had a blast together. Yes, it was. All right, so flipping out with Flipgrid. Why are, um, if you sort of, I saw some of the, the poll questions at the beginning um, <clears throat> that some of us maybe have heard of Flipgrid. We might have, students might have done some. We might not have always done that, but uh, in my opinion, if you haven't uh, heard about Flipgrid, that's that's like the like tech tool right now that many um, teachers and students are loving right now, and they're flipping out about. So, why are they flipping out? And <clears throat> we're we're wanting to share that with you. So, um, here we go. <clears throat> what is Flipgrid? So Flipgrid, uh, it's the leading video discussion platform, uh, obviously used by tons and tons of educators. They keep blowing us away with their um, new stats about how many students and teachers are using Flipgrid. It's extremely easy to use. It's a video response platform, but as you'll see today, it's it's so much more than that. It really creates a community, uh, builds dialogue with students. You pose a question or some sort of stimulus video. It could be a GIF. It could be an image. Students respond, and then they can reply back to each other. And the discussions that they have and that you'll hear is absolutely amazing. Yeah, so it's, it's basically a way to uh, let students um, use video. If we think of the, what students like to do nowadays, I teach sixth grade, and so my students are always constantly, you know, talking about what they're doing on their Instagram or their Snapchat, and they're taking pictures of themselves, and they are doing selfies and videos uh, of themselves, you know, in different ways. And this is kind of to bring that type of technology that they're naturally using um, for their social life or for for fun and bringing it into the classroom and allowing students to have a choice uh, in how they share their knowledge. It's not just writing an answer on a piece of paper. It's not just doing a worksheet. It's not just typing in an answer into a text box. So there's, there's all sorts of um, ways that they can use with Flipgrid. <coughs> uh, so it's really easy to get started. Um, you just go to flipgrid.com. Um, it works on pretty much every web browser. Um, it works on uh, Apple or Android devices um, where you can download the app and students just use the app to upload it. I, use, I have it on my phone um, and use it all the time. And right here, this on the right-hand side, you kind of see like a little... Um, how to Flipgrid almost, um, how easy it is for students to add a response. Um, it's just a quick little simple, you upload the app, you enter the grid code, or sometimes you get a link to the code where you just go right to it. You press the green plus button to add a response. You add the video. Um, you check to make sure it's OK. You click Next. You can take a selfie. And just one of the most recent things is you can draw on your picture, or you can add stickers and make it fun. Uh, that, that some of the apps that students like to use do. And then you click on and you submit it and bada bing, bada boom, it goes really quick, really fast. 
um, and it's a great way to for students to see each other's responses and for a teacher to see get a response from every student on an important question to see where they're know and check for their understanding. So this um, this little piece right here, this is actually a poster made by Claudio Zavala. And we if we haven't added it yet, we'll add it to the live binder. He posts this up in his Flipgrid recording studio. And then right where it says enter the grid, he actually laminated it and then just writes the grid code with a, a whiteboard marker on it and then erases it for the different grids so the kids have the directions right there when they're recording. It's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, a lot of a lot of teachers are creating like these flip grid recording booths. And it gives like students a little privacy area um, where they can go and record and it, and it kind of helps block out some sound or things like that. So yeah, that is in the live binder. I made sure and added it in. Perfect. Okay, so that's kind of like I guess the quick one minute what is Flipgrid. And so I think, oh, oh, I forgot about this one. Uh, <laughs> so why is it so why is it so fun to use? Well, there's kid friendly and you know adult friendly features too. Um, as you can see here, there is emojis involved where you can send feedback um, with a, with you know liking you know on Facebook you have you know the the like the love the you have the different emojis well they kind of built that into as students are watching classmate videos you can respond by um, giving them emojis and they have custom emojis that they've created just for themselves that you won't find anywhere else um, and students love that you can students can add a private link um, to their video if they're talking about something they can submit like what they're doing um, there's GIFs where those those animated picture uh, w without movie things without sound. There's stickers, personalized feedback. You know that you can flip the camera on like a iPad and do do a front facing so you can record things other than yourself for like projects and things. Um, so it's a, students really catch on because a lot of the same features that are in the social media apps that they use is in Flipgrid. And really, I think we could have gone back to Flipgrid and what is it. And they've kind of changed their, their um, like, what is it. It's all about social learning. Um, and that's what you see here is a lot of social type tools that um, make learning uh, fun. If you think about it, when we learn something, if I watch something on YouTube or if I am just scrolling through and I read a news article, um, learning is social. I'll turn around and talk to my wife, hey, check this out, or I'll share it with somebody the next time that topic comes up in a conversation. So it really helps make learning social and fun and um, kind of current <laughs> for them It's because this is the things that they do anyways outside of school. So I see in the chat we have a couple, Sean, if you want to go back to that last slide. Um, I see a question about student privacy. And so Flipgrid's really also very concerned about student privacy. And they have quite a few features that um, that they use to um, kind of level it for what you would like, what you're comfortable with, what your students are comfortable with, what your community is comfortable with. Um, one of the big things is the private links. And you can generate a private link to a video and share that with the parents um, or with anyone where it will only give them access to their student's video. It will not back back out back into the grid, which is a huge update. Also, you can password protect your grid so that students only have access to uh, it, you'll pass, password protect the grid and then all topics under that grid will be password protected. So only people who have that password can view them. There's quite a few privacy features that um, that they've added in because privacy is really important to them as well. Uh, another question was about um, uploading a still photo, then talking over that. You During the video, you can't do that, but you can upload. Uh, many different video files so a student could possibly do a screencast over a um, using like chatter pics or um, I think it's uh, telegami or they could just do a screencast and then upload that video as their response to their Flipgrid video. Oh yes, great, uh, great uh, 
uh, addition to that, yeah. So the private links is a big thing, and their privacy there is, um, you know, probably second to none. Where they say they're making sure that you know, um, unless the parent allows it or the teacher allows it, it's not going public. So, yeah. Yeah, you can also turn off the ability for anyone to share videos to social media. You could turn that ability off. So there's there's lots of um, different uh, ways you can password protect or just set the privacy settings there. So that's a great question. Okay. So like, how does this actually get used in a classroom? So I think that's like the number one question is like, okay, so here's Flipgrid, but how do we actually go about using it? So we wanted to kind of share with you some rapid fire ideas to kind of get you thinking about, um, okay, I'm teaching these students and I want them to do a Flipgrid, but how does that go into my content areas? Because it's, you know, we don't want to just use technology for the sake of technology. Um, right. That can add some flash and fun to it, and that's okay sometimes, but how is this actually going to improve the way that our students are learning? So we're going to go through here. we got a lot of different kind of quick little hit ideas just to kind of get you thinking um, about how this can be incorporated into your lessons. And we tried to find as many different um, content areas that we could so we can kind of hit a little bit of everything. But to be honest, the, the possibilities are endless. Um, as I'm discovering, there's more, so many ways uh, for that. So here we go. Rapid fire. This won't go s too fast, but I'm um, <laughs> not going to dwell in, on them for too long. Okay, so the first one. <coughs> you want to take this one, Sean? Yeah, I'll take this one because this is one actually I did in my classroom. So we were working on summarizing text with my students, and to be honest, they had been graphic organized and to death about summarizing text. So I included a um, writing prompt, and they wrote a story um, based on a writing prompt, and then they had a partner, and they switched. Um, their t their writing with a partner, and then their partner had to submit a summary of their partner's writing to Flipgrid. So they had to actually voice and say this story was about blank 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 based on what they read and could remember, and just summarizing it. So that is one that I included. So instead of constantly writing out, oh, what's the summary of the story? What's the story about? Um, it's another way to voice uh, or to share what they know and understand of a text. And I'm going so, along with uh, that. As, yeah. So we, um, as I mentioned before, Sean and I have worked together on a lot of different projects, and we one of one something that we worked on with a team, um, Michelle and Michelle Wagner, and Heather Marshall, and Sean and I worked on this uh, global read aloud project for uh, the Wild Robot, and of course we wanted to incorporate Flipgrid as a way for students to respond, and they responded. Uh, to the emotions, they had some um, questions that we gave them about the text, and they responded. And they, uh, this grade level was for fourth through fourth, third, fourth through fifth grade, and they responded on a flip grade. And since this was for the Global Read Aloud project, there were kids from all over the globe responding on this flip grid. We also gave the the opportunity to respond on the Padlet or flip grid, so they get, got two choices. So it was a great way for them to respond to the text and also share and collaborate with other readers around the world. You know, and a lot of times when we want students to respond to text, students might have uh, difficulty writing that and getting their mm -hmm. thoughts to a writing in, in that, and I know that happens where they must do that on um, like standardized tests and things like that, but this is kind of a great go-between or an adaptation or a differentiation type thing where they can start practicing early on in the year just saying it and then over time say it and then write it and then eventually wean them off so um, because I think they can do that a little bit easier just by talking about it. This is an interesting idea with writing. Um, by doing having a revision accountability. This is from a teacher that we also met um, at Flipgrid headquarters, um, Melinda Hurt from uh, Stillman Valley, Illinois. Uh, and she uses Flipgrid for students to kind of make like a video journal of 
what was like when they do peer to uh, peer to peer account uh, revisions. Um, kind of submitting like, okay, what was the revisions that was suggested and what are, what's your next steps and things like that. So I thought that was a great idea. So then they can go back and see, okay, this is what they talked about. Did I go back and make those changes? And it's kind of a log that they can kind of, or almost like a notes that they can go back to and check uh, for that. So it keeps them accountable for that. I'll go ahead and do this next one, Carly. This one's about math, and this is one I did this year. Um, like we've mentioned, you can actually include links to like YouTube videos or images or GIFs uh, to kind of as a extra stimulus to get students thinking. Um, and so this is one I did. This was a, a really funny one. This is an old Abbott and Costello video. Um, and if you are familiar with math, I know this is kind of popular, but you know, it's getting students to explain the reasoning and thought processes in our math. Um, if they can do that, then they are sharing their understanding of it. And so they had to watch this video, and then they had to solve this this problem of 13 times 7 because in the video he keeps explaining and showing how it equals 28, which is obviously wrong. But I challenge students to um, work it out and then explain how they solved it. So some use the standard algorithm, some use the area model, some use the um, partial product method. Some some showed it multiplication and explained division. Some uh, did repeated addition. And so they had all these different methods that they were coming together and proving what 13 times 7 should actually be. And well, another a, great... Go ahead, Carly. No, you go right ahead. My voice... I'll save it. <laughs> okay. That's fine. You save it and you chime in when you want to. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So this one's a. I, I was blown away. So don't only think about Flipgrid as um, a tool for students to use, but use it as a gateway to get parents involved as well. Um, what you can do is have students have students get their parents involved. And like Carly said, you can share the uh, videos with parents so they can see what's happening in the classroom. But what this, what uh, a fellow math teacher did, uh, Jennifer, she had her parents uh, challenge her students to record a video with her, her parents and explain when do you use percents in your real life or when do you use percents in your jobs. So the students are starting to see that the math that they're doing in the classroom applies in the real world. And uh, this was just, I was like, ah, oh, I got to do this. So uh, this is on my to-do list for this year with Flipgrid, getting parents involved as well. Science fair projects. Students can explain their science fair project, just kind of explain why they chose the project, um, and just kind of as a, a dialogue so that everybody in, in the class can see what they are um, doing in that um, in that science fair. And then another great thing is you can then follow up and ask questions. Students can ask questions of other students. Uh, students can reply back to their own and uh, share what they've learned throughout the process. This is another one I did with the, I don't know if you've done like biography um, research and students then do a wax museum. This was when I taught fourth grade. Fourth grade is all about Indiana history, and I think a lot of states um, in fourth grade are all about state history. So I did a famous Hoosiers project, and uh, one thing that, that I had students do was to dress up as that famous person, and they had to act like um, when they recorded their flip grid, they had to act like that they were a wax museum display and that someone pushed a button and turned on their, like, automated recording of who they are and they had to explain that and so then students could then um, watch and learn more so they're they're teaching so they did the research and they're, then they had to teach other students so they got to dress up as that famous person. Foreign languages. We have a huge um, global audience that I've noticed which is fantastic and 
maybe some of you in Italy or France or wherever I might have seen, um, how awesome if you're if you're needing to teach uh, English or if you have some native speakers of Italian or French and you want to and you could share a grid with uh, a teacher um, somewhere else around the world and they could practice their fluency um, and then they can uh, contact native speakers or just as your students in class they can practice speaking and then they can either watch it back themselves and check for fluency or other students can reply back or see how it's said and so they can learn from each other and help each other practice. Uh, I loved this idea for foreign languages. Citizenship. <clears throat> Another teacher that we met in at Flipgrid, um, Brian uh, Smith, he does a digital uh, lessons through the Common Sense um, educational digital bytes videos and he has a whole school-wide or corporation-wide lessons that get sent out that the, that the students do and then um, students from maybe kindergarten can see answers from students of high school and then they can go back and forth and uh, share their responses and kind of create this online community of students from different grade levels in the same corporation. Uh, and so kind of building up that classroom community or that school community through this in the digital citizenship. Computer science. This is from Carly. She's a big computer science geek now. Um, Hi. <laughs> um, I can take this one. So we just had the Hour of Code, which was a global, the global movement, um, getting kids interested in computer science. And we really hope that they don't stop there. There was also the Flipgrid Explorer series code, where they, um, students shared projects with two computer scientists at Flipgrid. And one of the great ways to use Flipgrid is to upload a link to, you can add a link to any of your videos. So students can add a link to, for example, a Scratch project, and then they can explain their process and their thinking, uh, how they went through the design process as they were creating their program, and then their debugging and what they what they were creating and their thinking along with it. So it's just a great way for them to explain projects and um, just upload that link so you can see it while the student is explaining it. It's a pretty cool way to utilize Flipgrid and computer science. Yeah, especially when you are, you know, every student can then kind of do it, maybe a screencast and then record that and submit it instead of like having to watch every student go run the program over their shoulder. They can do it and then explain it and you can see it. You have, and then you have like a, a, a folder or like a, you know, a, I don't know what I'm trying to, like a, a main part where everybody's, you know, right then and there. Kind of like, you know, we have the live binder for our, this classroom 2.0 thing and where everybody can see that resource where everybody can see everybody's at one time. Okay, so this is like Flipgrid has done since I started using so it back cool. in the spring. Flipgrid has added so many more features that have made it so super fantastic and wonderful and why I keep coming back to it. But this is by far my favorite. So again, I just gave you and Carly just chimed in and helped you understand like some ideas of how to use this but here's the fantastic thing they have created this topic discovery library and if you already a Flipgrid user and have a, a, a teacher account uh, you have access to this right now and if you're going to sign up hopefully if you're interested and and uh, you can now go and submit topics that teachers have used, or you can find topics that teachers have used in their classroom. So if you're looking for something on math with division for fourth grade, you can search by um, audience, you can search by grade level, you can search by subject area, and you can find these topics that have already been used. And the great thing about it, and this is almost the genius part, that the, whenever you submit one, the teacher kind of explains, this is 
part of this project, or this is how I facilitated this in my classroom. And basically, it's a free, open source, shared library within Flipgrid to use for free to steal and, and the best ideas of using Flipgrid into your own classroom. So you don't always have to be the one generating the ideas. You just have to, I mean, it's there for you to discover and insert immediately into your classroom. So this has been my favorite. Because I think when we share, we're better together, and we're always <clears throat> improving our craft. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool feature. Yep. OK, so <laughs> if. <laughs> All of this, I saw. I, I got sidetracked. I glanced over at the tr uh, the chat. Someone said, "Man, Sean's super uh, really excited to <laughs> and pumped up to share." Um, but yeah, if you c have caught the fever, if you have um, liked what you've seen, kind of in our short presentation so far, um, if you sign up for Flipgrid, or if you've already signed up for Flipgrid and you haven't used a promo code before, you can upgrade your Flipgrid from the basic Flipgrid One account to a 45-day free trial of the Classroom Premium account that has um, that has all the features that we've kind of been talking about um, by using either one of our names, Sean Fahey or Carly Mora, and that'll get you a 45-day um, free trial on the the full package. Yep, you could use either code. You should just use Sean, so. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so creating an account is super easy. You just go to Flipgrid. You can sign up for free. Um, you create an account. Um, it's You just put in your name, email, password. Um, if you're just signing up for the very first time, go ahead and select Classroom Account, and then put our name in for the promo code. You do not have to submit any type of payment. It won't like automatically charge you. Uh, you don't have to put any type of credit card information in yet or anything like that. It'll automatically just deduct that and you're on your way to go. Um, and then it kind of automatically walks you into creating your first grid um, and kind of getting you started. And it's, it's so uh, super simple and easy to use. I think that's one thing that we both love about it, the simplicity of it just the kind of the natural flow of how it works and implementing it. So whether or not like you quote are a tech person or not a tech person, it's really easy to catch on and use. So it's so easy and the kids figure it out so quickly. And they they, they can they can figure it out and then teach everybody else. All right. So we have an exciting announcement. With that, signing up for an account, we have secured two um, Flipgrid Classroom subscriptions to give away. And I think Peggy or Maureen or somebody is going to come on here and um, facilitate how to win this prize. Yes, I am. This is so exciting, and thank you so much for offering these. They actually have two of these one-year free subscriptions available. So what we're going to do is something that we have done in the past with these kinds of drawings. If you are interested in winning one of these prizes, we want you to raise your hand. And we're going to have two separate drawings. So the hand is right there underneath your name. It looks like a hand. And when you click on it, you can see that the a hand comes up and a number is by your name. And so I'm going to give you just a minute to get your hand raised. And then I'm going to ask you to not lower your hand until we can select the first winner. Then I'm going to have you all lower your hands. And we're going to do it one more time. So there are two awesome prizes. OK. so. Last call here, I see that we have 10 people with hands raised so far. So now, stop raising your hand and um, don't lower your hand. And I'm going to draw a number with a random number generator 
right now. And the winning number is eight. So congratulations to number eight, who is Lisa. You are the first winner. <laughs> Laura, Lisa, it looks like it didn't affect you. Congratulations. Okay, so we're going to lower all these hands. And I see somebody is doing that. That's good. We want to get them all lowered. And so Lisa won't be in this round. And now, everyone, once again, if you'd like to win, raise your hand. And we'll do another drawing. This is such an awesome prize. I wish I could enter. <laughs> You're just going to love having the full classroom subscription. That is such an awesome gift. OK, just a few more seconds to get your hand up. OK, it looks like we have eight hands raised. So don't lower your hand and don't raise your hand now. And I will select a new winner. And the winner is number two. So congratulations, number two, Anna F. And if both of you winners could please put your email address in uh, the chat. I'll make sure it gets removed before we post the chat log. But we'd like to be able to send you the information for how you get your subscription. Congratulations to both of you. All right, so we're back on. Um, congratulations to the winners. That's so exciting. Oh, I'm so excited for you guys. Yay. Um, so uh, Sean and I did a webinar, uh, Flipgrid Unplugged, uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago now. And uh, we discussed some, was it September? Oh, time flies, Sean. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. OK. Uh, so um, oh, man. Uh, so one of the things that we discussed is uh, a really cool, great feature of Flipgrid is getting those speaking and listening standards that we often have a really hard time uh, getting uh, assessed with our students. And Flipgrid gives us a way to do that. Rather than just having all the students come up and present something in a one-time shot, which the kids are presenting and they're scared, and you're really not getting the speaking and listening standards in like you want. Uh, Give, having the opportunity to customize the feedback on Flipgrid as you give your students um, a score, uh, a rubric score for their speaking and listening standards as they're recording their videos is a great way to utilize Flipgrid um, to assess your students as they're, um, as they're speaking and as they're listening to other students, but especially the speaking standards. The, um, we know that PV legs from Eric Palmer is a great, um, and we've added that to the uh, live finder. If we hadn't, we will. And that's a great way to uh, to check your students um, your students uh, speaking while they're while they're responding to Flipgrid videos. So it's just a great way to you can customize the feedback that you're giving to your students. And a new update in Flipgrid is that you can actually give your students video feedback. So you can give them uh, a rubric based score and then also video feedback um, on their on their videos. You want to add anything to that, Sean? Nope, I think you covered it. We'll move on. All right. Is your head spinning yet? Uh yeah, don't worry <laughs> about that. Um we got like I said, I see it in the chat. They're dropping many links for you to see, and there's many uh, links that are that have been added to the live binder uh, for you to just kind of explore at your own leisure and slowly get into that. But we 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 know that teachers can sometimes need just a little bit of extra help, and we kind of figured there was an audience for this. And so Carly and I got together and said, you know what? Sometimes watching webinars is great, but actually having something that you can you know, almost like a owner's manual. And we kind of ended up creating this edu educator's guide to Flipgrid. And it's a ebook that we put together. It's PDF. 
Um, and the short URL is right there, and I'm sure oh, yep, somebody already put it into the chat. Um, you can click that, save it to your drive, save it somehow, download it to your device, or you can simply just print it off um, in color or black and white, and it has, it has links for you to go to. It has some of the things that we've already mentioned. Um, and um, so, yeah, so it's, it's there for you to kind of go through. It kind of walks you through, like, how to create a grid, how to create a topic, kind of the lingo, what's a topic, what's a grid, what's a response, what's a reply, um, kind of helps you kind of understand the flow of Flipgrid as well. So we just kind of try to make sure and add plenty of um, resources to kind of get some of us started um, if we're not very comfortable with using technology. So this is kind of a tactical thing that you, that you can go to and mark up and there's, there's QR codes. If you do QR codes to scan, it'll take you to links. But there's also the short URLs that you can type in and go to those resources. So that is kind of like... We see a lot. That's just kind of our... We, like, we see. You keep talking, I keep talking. <laughs> so that's just kind of like our little, you know, help, another little helpful thing to get teachers going just because we think that uh, Flipgrid is such a, a dynamic and powerful tool to use. So we see a lot of teachers, um, if they, they get so excited about Flipgrid, they want to present Flipgrid to their staff as well. And so we see a lot of people using this guide, printing it out, and giving it to teachers in their presentations or for their staff as a way to get them started with Flipgrid. Oh, yeah, that's a great validation. <laughs> when you have other people using your thing in their PD uh, for their teachers. So that's fantastic. Okay, I think... Oh, here is your chance, okay? So if you have never done Flipgrid, you don't have to do this now. This is, you can write down this code or you can uh, go to the, uh, this code. Whenever Flipgrid has a code, um, you can type that into the URL. So this code right here would be www.flipgrid.com forward slash A3B54D. Um, this is a grid that... Um, Carly has created a topic, and you can just share your thoughts about Flipgrid, and there's already uh, things, uh, responses there that you can check out and get maybe more inspiration. So you can uh, check this out and actually try recording a Flipgrid video. Again, to record from a mobile device, um, iPad, phone, you will need to download the app, and you can find that in your app store. Or if you're like on a computer, you just type it into your web browser. You give permission to the uh, webcam that you might have, and off you go. Super simple. With that, I will say thank you to everyone here and being asked to join in from Peggy and Maureen and all everybody at Classroom 2.0. Um, so... With that, please stay connected with us, and if you have any questions, we'll be doing a little Q&A here in a moment. Thanks so much, Carly and Sean. Yes, I did capture some questions that you didn't answer along the way. And I'll just say, I see Adam Short Shorts in the, uh, the <laughs> chat. Adam is actually... Um, a Flipgrid, uh, I don't know, employee. He's at Flipgrid HQ. Um, I can't remember his exact title, so I see him answering some questions too and helping us out here. So thanks, Adam, for joining in and it's being here. Yes, thanks, Adam. Um, this teacher has trouble motivating kids to use Flipgrid, so how... What are some suggestions to motivate kids to use Flipgrid? Um, for me, you know, this is actually a, a difficult one because I have some students that totally love it because mm -hmm. they love the social aspect of it, the, the, the stickers, the, the video, because they do it on Instagram and things like that. Um, but there, there are others that, one, they're afraid to be seen. They think they're going to make a mistake. 
Um, and so there's there's things out there that I've seen students that they've done is one, you can have them um, hold a picture of something else, like a drawing or something, or uh, in front of the camera as as they share, mm -hmm. or <clears throat> if if that might be like the shyness factor, um, or it might just be. And, and this is my thing. Um, students have learned how to play the game of school quite well, mm -hmm. and when you're asking a question of students, there are students that aren't listening and totally check out, and they're waiting for those two, three, four students that always um, raise their hand and answer to answer it for them, and then they'll just go right along and say, yep, yeah, that's right. But when you, it's, it's a, I think it's a higher level thinking when you say, okay, I want you to answer this question, because then they're held accountable for that, and it's, maybe it's more difficult, there's more higher expectations um, with that, and I've had my I have my fair share students that just absolutely despise it. And if that's the case, um, I think with Flipgrid, it's it's a choice. Some students aren't comfortable recording or saying it. Some students would rather draw a picture or write a paragraph about it. And if that's what they would like to do, we can let them do it. Um, and so. <clears throat> Just finding a, a balance, I think. Don't overuse Flipgrid because then they're going to start hating it. Okay. <clears throat> but then uh, mix in some choices as well. Okay. I, I would agree with that. Uh, the option to upload videos is great, so having them screencast. Or like Sean said, give them an option to do something else. That's why we give the Padlet versus Flipgrid for the global read aloud. Some students are more comfortable with one or the other. Mm-hmm. And I think we've addressed the student privacy question, although it's an important one. And this actually was uh, one you just suggested. Can a user upload a still photo and then talk over that instead of recording a live headshot video? You've already answered that. Um. What's the added value of Flipgrid compared to Padlet? So Flipgrid is a video response. Padlet, you can, um, you could add videos to uh, a Padlet, but Padlet is more for written responses or adding links in. Padlet mm -hmm. is a like a online like bulletin board. Flipgrid, on the other hand, will give students the opportunity, if you have Flipgrid Classroom, for students to respond directly to each other's videos. And they can, and it's all through video, they can upload a video, but it's all in one, one place and you can do topics under a grid. So the added benefit of Flipgrid is that video response and giving the kids the opportunity to respond directly to each other's videos. Mm-hmm, okay. Um, how do we make Flipgrid assignments accessible, that is, non-hearing, low vision, or blind, for blind students? So for um, the translation, the new, they just updated their translations for Flipgrid, and so mm -hmm. now they have it's the ability to translate into tons of different languages and the translations are so much better. So for our students that are hard of hearing, you've got the translations. For our students that, for our uh, vision impaired students, mm -hmm. you know what, I think that's one that I would have to uh, throw at maybe um, Adam or, or, or Joey, some of the, about how, mm -hmm. how we can get our students that are, are uh, vision, visually impaired students um, with Flipgrid, but if we could translate the documents, um, perhaps if there's a yeah, translation into Braille. Well, I, th I think maybe with with visually impaired students, um, they're not then dependent on using a Brailler if that's what they have to use. Um, they can just speak their answers instead of always having to write it down. Um, and then, because I know we have some low vision students at my school, and a lot of times the the work has to go from from the student will do it on the brailler, then they'll give it to the her her low vi uh, the, the visually impaired teacher, and the teacher will move it back to 
you know, regular text so the teacher can grade it. Now, with Flipgrid, if, if as a option, a, a visually impaired student, with the help of maybe another student or a teacher, can just simply talk and share their answer um, through there uh, and providing that. Now, I know there's times where things need to be written and things and like that, but always constantly having to have students write things down, I think we are losing, um, I mean, we're doing them injustice uh, by just making them write everything down because that's not how we always communicate. Look what we're doing right now. We're on this video chat system where we're um, getting all these other people together from all over the globe, um, and we don't need to handwrite things out. Now, we have a chat on the side, and that helps us communicate as well, but I think low uh, visually impaired students can benefit greatly um, because it cuts out maybe a step or two um, with giving responses. Okay. And the video, the new video feedback also uh, is a great way to uh, for teachers to give, like Sean just said, to give for teachers to give that feedback in video, and you could play the play the video for the students. Mm -hmm. Can a student pre preview their video before submitting? Yes. yes. Actually, the great thing about Flipgrid is um, as you were recording, you can pause any time, mm -hmm. and it will pick it up right there where you left off. Um, and so, and then before you submit the video uh, to the grid, you have the option to watch your video. and it, and so there's that that idea of you have multiple takes um, to perfect your answer, whether it's the delivery of it, how you're speaking, the rate of speed talking, or just how you answered it in general after you after you're watching yourself back. Um, that I didn't really communicate that clearly. So you have that learning through um, self reflection of checking your work before giving that final submission. Unlike when you require just text answers all the time, students get one shot to write their answer correctly. Uh, and so, uh, yes, you can preview uh, your video. And, and unfortunately, you can't go back and just edit a part. Either you accept the whole thing or you uh, delete it and start all over. But, yeah, mm -hmm. you can preview your answer before moving on and submitting it. Great. And the video responses can be varied by length. Um, if you have a Flipgrid classroom account, it can go from 30 seconds to all the way up to five minutes, so for some longer presentations that you'd like to have students do. Does, I think this is Maureen's question. Does Flipgrid provide actual transcripts? Is that one of the new updates? Um, they've yeah. ha they've had transcripts, okay, but now they have the um, clo like closed captioning mm -hmm. um, embedded in the video. Um, they've had transcripts. It's not been the best, but I think that's still around. If Adam's still here, he might he might know. Um, and you know for sure if it's still there. Mm -hmm. But I can I can quickly check afterwards and and pass that along by going to, to my Flipgrid account and seeing, seeing whether or not. Okay. Those were the questions that I was able to capture that had not been answered during the show. Does anyone else have questions for Carly and Sean? Okay. Closed captioning took the place of transcripts from Adam, part of Adam's reply. Yes. Would anyone else like to take the mic and share how they've used Flipgrid? You can raise your hand and we can give you the mic. Adam, Michael, either one of you like to share? OK. 
Okay, Adam. I'll just give you the mic. Can you use the, the talk button and get on the mic, Adam? Oh, I see now. Can you guys hear me now? We sure can. Wonderful. All right. Well, I just wanted to thank uh, Carly and Sean for an awesome presentation, um, and thank you all for joining us today. This has been really fun. I, I don't usually get the opportunity to um, see people present Flipgrid, so I've really enjoyed this. Um, and all of your questions, and like I mentioned, I'm sharing the ideas that you guys came up with with the team. So thank you, Carly and Sean, and to uh, everyone that joined us today. And thank you for moderating. Thanks, Adam. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. That was so awesome. Thank you so much, Sean and Carly. I get so inspired every time I hear the two of you talk about Flipgrid. And I don't see how anyone cannot catch that Flipgrid fever after listening to you. Thank you so much. Well, today, this is a fabulous show to end our fall season because we're about to go on our winter break. And we won't have another show until we have our ninth anniversary celebration. We've been doing this for nine years, and we think that's worth celebrating. So January 13th is when we're going to have our celebration. But all of our shows are recorded, so you can always go into our archives. Maybe you have a little time over your holiday break that you might be able to watch some webinars. Feel free to check out our archives, and you can get a certificate for any recordings you watch, even if you aren't able to join them live. So take a look at those, and that's why I'm so excited that this is our last presentation before the break, because that's the one that will be featured on our website for the next few weeks until the next show comes up. So thank you all. Thank you all for coming, and we'll look forward to seeing you in January, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where as long as your session is open to the public, if you sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session and it's open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this site. The link is also available in the Live Binder. You can nominate yourself. For, as a featured teacher for the month. The video collections on iTunes U, again, accessible from the live binder. As you exit the session, the survey should open up. You can also take the link from the, the chat or from within the live binder. And at the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate that, that uh, Peggy mentioned. They now print out with your name, thanks to Patty Ruffing, who also sends them out. Make sure, though, when you put in the email address that it's a personal email address and not a school, schools tend, tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks to our special guests, Carly Mora and Sean Fahey, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution to Blackboard Collaborate for a webinar platform and to everyone who participated in the show. Thanks so much for coming and have happy holidays. <laughs>